Hello, today I'm sharing beginner makeup tips for women over 50 for color correcting. If you've ever wondered how the makeup artists do it, I'm gonna teach you today, but it's going to be very simple and very easy. When I first started learning about color correction, I actually reached out to a friend. This was after I had an in-office treatment on my scar, I had a V-beam treatment, which left a lot of bruising. So I reached out to a friend and she gave me the basics. I picked up a palette, she walked me through it, and I'll leave a clip of that video at the end of this video. You'll probably be very interested in it. I had a lot of bruising, so I had to cover up yellows and purples and reds, and she walked me right through it. We kind of did it together, and it was a lot of fun, and that got me interested in color correcting dispigmentation all around the face, mostly around my eye area, a couple little spots here and there. So I'm gonna show you the basic tips today on how to do some color correction. If there's some areas on your skin that you'd like to subtly cancel out. I put on a white shirt on purpose because I realized that a lot of times the colors that we're wearing can reflect up to our face. So I wanna get a real true look at the discoloration on my face, kind of analyze that before I go in with some colors, just to make sure that I have a real good clue as to what colors that I'm dealing with that I wanna correct. Now, the first time that you do this, maybe throw on a white shirt. After that, you'll probably get the hang of it. I didn't always just throw on a white shirt, then do the color correcting, then change my clothes. That doesn't seem practical at all, but I recommend that if you've never done this before, throw on a white shirt before you get started. Take a look at your skin, in the mirror and also there's a tip that i'm going to show you that you can figure out whether the color you're seeing on your skin is either a shadow being created by the shape of your eye or the light that you're in versus actual dispigmentation get a hand mirror or your phone selfie and you're going to hold it up and what you're going to do is you're going to get in some bright light and window light and you're going to sit up and you're going to kind of look at things and see where the dark shadows that you have or the thing, the colors that you don't like are. Then you're going to lay back and you're going to reanalyze that. If those shadows tend to be what's causing the problem, you're going to see less pigmentation when you are lying down than when you're sitting up. So do that a couple times, kind of figure out whether you're dealing with shadow versus whether you're dealing with pigmentation. That's gonna be really helpful when you're using the color wheel to choose the color that you're going to cancel because typically it's just a play of light. So that isn't actually color correcting pigment, that's just color correcting shadows and light. We're not doing that today. We're gonna to actually use pigment to cancel out color. So definitely get your discoloration defined before you start. I personally have purple discoloration in the corner of my eye, purple veins and redness in my upper eye, right under the brow and over the lid on both sides. And my rims of my eyes are red. I have a red spot here I'd like to correct. I have some reddish purple brown spots where my glasses sit that I'd like to correct. The simplest way to explain how to cancel out color that you don't want is to grab a color wheel. I have also done some reading online and I've also read the back of the Stilla palette and I find these explanations a lot more confusing and not very helpful for beginners. We're gonna keep it really basic. If you have some purple tones, that you wanna cancel out, you're gonna just run across to the color wheel and look for yellows and greens. You wanna to go to the opposite side of the color wheel. If your discoloration leans a little bit more bluish, which is common with skin tones that are a little bit deeper than mine, you're gonna color correct that with peach tones. If you have redness due to acne marks or rosacea, you're gonna color correct with green. If on the other hand, you have some brownish, yellowish brown marks that you wanna correct, you're going to go back to blue and you're gonna look for flesh tones that kind of have a blue undertone. And of course, in the end, we're going to be blending these colors together. So it's going to look very cohesive, even though you're using some fairly stark colors and you're only gonna use a very small amount. So let's get going defining some of the color combinations that I'm gonna to use to cancel out my color. So. On this left side, I'm going to use the Stilla palette. And for the purple in my inner eye, I'm going to apply a little bit of the yellow. And I'm just gonna tap these in. I find that tapping them in with your finger is the easiest way to do it because the cream makeup just sinks into your skin as opposed to applying it with a brush where a lot of the product ends up in the brush. 
and doesn't get warm enough to really melt into the skin. I'm going to apply some yellow to cancel out some of these purple tones in my inner corner. And I'm going to tap it in. And you can already see that's looking a lot better. Over the lid, I'm going to head toward some more green tones because it's very red. And I may apply a little bit of the yellow where I have purple veins. So you can mix and match these colors a little bit. So again, I'm going to use my fingers, tap into the green. That's probably a little bit too much. I'm just gonna lightly tap over my eyelid. And where I have a, this purple vein, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the yellow and just tap that out. In the corner of my eye, I kind of have a blending of both purple and some redness. So I'm gonna use each of those colors again and combine them a bit. Under my eye, I have a little bit of purple here, then it goes to red, and then I have this line where you're seeing a demarcation because of my fat pad and cheek demarcation. So this is a little bit on the purple side, so I'm going to grab for some yellow. And around my eye area is a little red, so I'm gonna grab for some green. The reason I'm going to use a brush is because these areas are a little bit more precise. And I just flipped my brush over to grab some of the green. I'm going to go down to this red spot right here, cancel that out, and the red spot over my lip, cancel that out. And then I'm going to blend this all together. After I've blended it, I'm going to tap with my finger and warm everything up because the mature under eye has such propensity to crease that blending this out and warming this up will decrease the crease. You can see how the discoloration in my eye area and over my lip has almost completely been canceled out. Now let's do the same thing with the next palette on my right side. Again, for the larger areas, I am gonna use my fingers to warm up. And on this side, I have more purple in this area, so I'm gonna add some yellow. And the redness is more to the outside and the inner corner. So I'm going to add in some green. That's a very bright green compared to the Stilla palette. So we'll see how that blends out. For the inner corner, I'm gonna add some yellow. And this outer corner where there's a combination of red and purple, once again, I've got the green coming down there already, so I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow. I also see some redness over the rim of this eye, so I'm going to tap in a little yellow. And to cancel out the red in the under eye, I'm going to use the brush ever so sparingly. And then I'm going to blend this out. As you can see in the next palette, the green is really pigmented, so I'm going to cancel out that green with a little bit of the peach, peachish red tone. And blend that in. So here's the final look. I think both of them definitely canceled out my discoloration. 
I just found that the green pigment in the NYX palette is really intense, so be very sparing with this compared to the Stila palette, which the green is a little bit more muted and actually more easily cancels out my particular redness. But both of these are lovely. I'm going to do a wear test, which I'll show you at the end to see if we get any creasing. What I do like about the Stila palette is they have some powders that you can try. So I'm going to powder each side depending on what I'd like to cancel the most. The purple is gonna cancel some redness and some yellowness. So I'm going to use the purple powder because this eye is a little bit on the yellow side. So I'm going to try and brighten that up a bit. And of course, always setting a correction color is going to give it a little bit more longevity. On this side, I find this is a little bit on the green side. So I'm going to try the yellow to kind of neutralize that out a bit and see what we think. All right, I think that already looks a lot better. And we'll give this maybe four or five hours and I'll come back and take a look to see if we got any creasing. I did decide to wear a little bit of makeup today for my complexion product. I chose the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Light Revealer and Cameo. For my lip and my cheek, I blended the Tower 28, their Beach Please Party Hour and the Beach Please Dream Hour. So I love mixing and matching these for lip and cheek and I wore the Tower 28 mascara. And I've talked a little bit about this recently that it's getting a little bit drier each tube that I buy. For some reason, I'm also getting more fallout than I used to. So the longevity of these isn't what they used to be. So I'm gonna have to find a new favorite mascara. It was a pretty minimalist makeup day. I just didn't really feel like I needed any eyeshadow after doing the color correction. My eyes looked bright, they looked awake, they looked fresh. And to be really honest, they still look pretty good for having worn this all day. It was definitely longer than five hours. So the check-in is a little later than I anticipated, but that's good. We gave it an all day wear test. Now let's take a look at the creasing. I'm gonna zoom the camera lens in. We're gonna take a really good look to see if we have any creasing after doing the powdering underneath. And if the Stilla or the NYX had a better wear and less creasing. So let's look at the Stilla side first. So I'm noticing some creasing in my recessed lid area. Very minimal to no creasing in the crow's feet and in the under eye area. And if we can kind of ignore the mascara fallout, I think the wear is a little bit better in the under eye area on the left, the Stila side, than the NYX. You can see where this line of demarcation is a little darker on the next side than the right side. Let's take a look at the creasing on the next side. Not much at all in my crow's feet, not much at all in the under eye area. In the recessed area of my eye, there's a fairly significant amount of the color correction collected, but it's not bad, you can't see it. I also feel like the wear on this side, like I mentioned, is a little bit less in the lower lid area, but in the upper lid area, I think they're pretty similar. I'm actually really surprised about the lack of creasing along the crow's feet area and the under eye area with both palettes. I honestly expected definitely to see creasing in the crow's feet area with any concealer, color correction, anything I used. But remember we did do the powdering in the under eye area and along the crow's feet with the Stila powders. And I really think that helped. In the future, I'm gonna try powdering my recessed crease area and see if I get less collection of the color correction product by the end of the day. You really can't see it unless I just close my eyes and do a lot of blinking. And I think the average person isn't gonna be looking at me that closely, but like I said, I'm really impressed by both palettes. Highly recommend both. I have a feeling I'm gonna be reaching for the Stila palette a little bit more often because the colors are a little bit less intense and easier to work with. They're not quite as vibrant. And they also have these powders that are just lovely to help set. I like the NYX palette definitely, but the colors again are a little bit more intense. 
The colors are definitely creamy. These are both cream-based color correctors. So I like the fact that they're mature skin friendly, they're cream-based, they warm up with the skin really well, but I have a feeling I'm gonna get less use out of the NYX color correction palette than I will the Stilla. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to watch this video here where I share with you how I learned to color correct after my V-beam treatment. Thanks very much for watching and wishing you all a skintastic day.